I think the thing I'm most looking forward to is working with the players on a day-to-day -day basis and building the team. I think first and foremost, it's about building a style and seeing a team that really reflects you know, what we want here in Omaha. So making sure that everybody is on the same page, making sure everyone works together, making sure that everyone understands their role and gives everything in every game. It's a group that's won. Right? It's an experienced group of quality players that's won. And I think you've got a nice mix of youth and experience there. Guys that know the league, guys that know what it takes to win in this league. So just really looking forward to working with them. I think the first thing is a really identifiable style. You know, a team that plays with a clear system where anybody can come watch the game and say, OK, I can see what they're trying to do today. I can see what the coach's ideas are. I can see the quality of the players. So I think just having that identity being really, really strong is super important. I think first and foremost, if we speak about community, it's about the players and the staff integrating themselves in the community, getting to know key stakeholders within the community and getting to know the fans and, and making themselves accessible being part of Omaha, being proud to be in Omaha, enjoying everything that Omaha has to offer, and then also being a united group, right? Representing the club well off the pitch, being good people, trying to get involved in community projects when they can. I think if you talk about on the pitch or in the changing room, you're looking at a mentality where everybody puts the team above their own needs, right? And where everybody is willing to sacrifice their own desires for, for what's best for the team. If you look back at my time in El Paso the last couple of years, in 2021, we had a really successful season under Mark Lowry, who's a great coach. So I think being around Mark, seeing how he ran the program, for me, that was a great example of how to do things and how to get a winning team. So I think that, and then also, if you look at the club's track record of developing players and selling them onto bigger clubs in the USL Championship, and now the MLS with Ryan Giba going there, I think my development background in working with young players, helping them make the step up to the first team, and then moving on to bigger and better things is, is going to be really beneficial here. Yeah, super happy to bring those two guys with me. I've known both of them for quite a while now. Uh, Ladule and I have done a few coaching courses together and became good friends through that process. He's somebody that has a really strong background in terms of GPS and physical loading of the players. And I think he's going to be a real asset to us. He's kind of going to be working side by side with me alongside Kevin who's going to take on a lot of the scouting responsibilities in terms of finding players. Kevin's got a, a great track record at Ocean City, a, a top USL2 team, of bringing in top college players and helping them to become pros. So I'm excited to see what they both bring to the party here. Uh, really exciting to, to get to work with them and I think we're pretty fortunate to have two assistant coaches who are as strong as those two. Uh, really looking forward to meeting the fans. I know we've got some great supporters groups here and. Everybody I've spoken to on visiting teams and you know, visiting players and coaches, they said to me it's really, really difficult to play here. So looking forward to seeing what the fans bring on March 26th when we play against Forward Madison. I'm the first person in my family to go to university, uh, went on and got a master's degree and I think my family are proud of that and, and I'm also looking back at the time. I didn't think it was that big a deal, but, but now looking back and from some of my experiences, that's probably my, my biggest achievement. The relationships I've built with people whether it's other coaches that I've worked with really closely, day to day or, or with players, and the impact I've had on them. And that's not always the best player, right? It's maybe someone you've helped off the field. For example, in El Paso, there were a lot of first generation American kids. And I kind of set up a program to get those kids into college, which they weren't really doing before. So this past year, we had seven kids that went off, you know, from first generation families, went off and got college scholarships to get an education. Uh, so I'm, I'm proud of that, yeah. The 1994 World Cup, which was here in the States, and I think this is probably what planted the seed of interest for me to come to America. My dad is Italian, and Italy went all the way to the final. It was my first kind of memory of watching football, you know, every day with the World Cup. So that's kind of when I fell in love with the game, and I guess fell in love with the idea of coming to America as well. So my team is Tottenham Hotspur. It has been since I was a, a small child back in London. So Spurs is my team. Um, I'm actually living in Benton and there's a Tottenham bar around the corner, so uh, pretty happy with that. Yeah, so this is uh, one that I guess not many American people would know about, um, but we have a, a meal in the area I'm from in London called Pie and Mash, uh, which comes with like, we call it liquor, but it's a, it's a green gravy, which I think turns a lot of people off. Um, but whenever I go back to England, that's always the first thing that I go for. So right now it's just me and my wife, Mercedes. Um, she's an incredible woman. She's a, she's a teacher. Um, she's American, but from the Dominican Republic. 
Um, so we actually went back there just before Christmas and had a nice holiday over there in the Caribbean. Um, we've moved quite a lot in the last few years, which can be difficult. You know, it's, it's always stressful moving around. And the first time we moved together, it was actually because of her. Uh, so back in 2017, she was starting a master's degree in Barcelona in Spain. So I thought it was a great opportunity to, one, obviously stay with her, but then two, go over, learn the language and do some coaching, study Spanish coaching methodology and Spanish football. Um, so that was kind of our first move together. And then we came back to New York after three years there. We knew New York, we'd been settled in New York for a while. So we kind of saw ourselves staying in New York. And I was working for the New York Cosmos, which is a really historic club. And uh, somewhere when I was a young coach, I would go and watch Gio Savarese and Carlos Chimosa training the team there. They had some great players like Raul and, and Marcus Senna. Uh, and then I went back to be the assistant coach. So to me, it was a beautiful thing because I'd really come full circle with the club from being someone that would go into study to then someone that was, you know, Carlos Mendes' right-hand man. And, and Carlos was a, a fantastic coach and mentor for me. But then after a year, the club went out of business. So then that's when we moved to El Paso um, after Mark invited me down there to work with him. And, and now we're in Omaha, which we're happy to be in. Um, so we lived in Barcelona for a couple of years, which was amazing. It's a city where you have absolutely everything. Great football, great culture, great food. You've got the beach, you've got kind of city life, you've got great history and parks. So Barcelona is, is up there. Uh, we've got real special memories of that place. And also, I think probably Brazil. We went to Rio de Janeiro a couple of times. I went there first for the World Cup in 2014, which was amazing. And then went back a couple of years later for a study visit and yeah, had a great time. So I think me and my wife, we love to travel. So any chance we get, we travel and go and see new places and explore new places. That's something we've always done together. It's obviously difficult with a soccer schedule to do that, but during the off season, we always try and make an opportunity to, to get out and, and see different places, whether here in the States or further afield internationally. Um, the other hobby I have, which I'm a little bit embarrassed to say because you guys might think I'm a real old man here, but I really love gardening and raising vegetables and things like that. So uh, I was actually telling the guys off camera here that when we lived in Brooklyn, I had uh, access to a rooftop and I just covered the whole thing in tomatoes and cucumbers and even watermelons, everything. So that's something that, uh, that I enjoyed doing.